Hi right, guys and welcome to today's video. So today we've got a bit of a comparison on the cards. We're going to be checking out the Bognet Mini Ecstasy and the Friedman Mini BE. Now I will be doing a more in-depth video with each amp further down the line, um, but today this video is more designed for anyone who's looking at picking up one of the two amps and isn't sure which to go for. Hopefully it will give people a clearer idea of which amp might meet their tonal kind of tastes and preferences really. So with that in mind, the way we're going to run the comparison, we're going to hear um, a bunch of AB clips, so the same thing on both amps. We're going to hear amp one, amp two, back to amp one again as a reminder. But we're not actually going to know which amp it is we're hearing until the end of amp two. Um, so that way we can hear both amps, decide which tone we prefer, and then we'll find out which amp it was. Just keep things as fair and unbiased as possible. The only clip I've not actually been able to do this with is the cleanish tones, which is the first clip you'll hear. Um, the reason being for that I had the Seymour Duncan Darkson delay and reverb in the effects loop of each amp. Um, and the way I've got the room set up, I couldn't keep the amp out of the camera shot with all the cables going on. As far as the tones go, it's very similar settings on each amp in each tone setting. Um, I've not gone for identical tones though, as the second amp would be at the disadvantage having had to match the first amp. So I've more tried to dial in each one how I felt was most appropriate for the particular piece I'm playing. That being said, the volume and gain were pretty much the same on every clip across the two amps. Um, and I'll put what they were set to on screen as well.
So we've heard a few back to back tones there. Um, my kind of takeaways, to me the Friedman sounded a little bit more vintage orientated where the bog note was a little bit more modern sounding, um, which I, I believe is the same with their more expensive counterparts. Um, and speaking on that, this is, I think the word or the phrase solid state amps can um, sometimes kind of have some negative connotations with them. And the thing is to remember that these are kind of budget solid state amps um, and it's to allow people a kind of an idea of what the Friedman sound is and what the Bogner sound is at a much lower price point than their kind of flagship models. Um, but one thing to remember I think is like for the price on these amps, um, they do both sound great and like a budget um, solid state amp when I was learning guitar like 15, 16 years ago was a Line 6 Spider. Um, so just something to kind of consider when um, when making comparisons against other amps, I guess. I don't think either company necessarily intended these to be a replacement as valve amps, more as either something to use as a backup or a practice amp, um, or for home recording like I've been doing today. In terms of gigging with these amps, um, I've not had a chance to, to gig with either. And they're both 30 watts, um, so depending on what cab you're using, you've probably got the capability to shift enough air at a rehearsal or a jam session. Um, and if you're mic'd up and you're using wedges, then um, there's no reason why you couldn't gig with these. So as I mentioned at the start of the video, specs wise, I will be doing a more detailed run through each amp. However, I'll just very quickly take us through the front panel on each. Um, I'm using the leaflets as the amps are behind me. Um, the Friedman, we've got the volume, bass, mid, treble, presence and gain. These are shared across both amps. Um, and then the Friedman has two mini toggles, so we've got a cut and a tight switch. So the cut adjusts the range of the gain pot and the uh, tight is three position switch that varies the low bass frequencies of the amp if you want to tighten up the bottom end. Um, moving on to the Bogner now. Um, same six, so we've got the volume, presence, treble, middle, bass, and gain again. Um, and this time we've got a Variac switch, which is like a voltage drop, um, something Eddie Van Halen made famous, um, gives you more kind of dynamic compression to your sound. Um, we've got a gain, low and uh, like a minus and plus, um, and this takes us from a more uh, vintage kind of plexi tone to something a little bit more modern and hot rodded. Then we've got a mid frequency, so this um, sets the the frequency that the mid dial controls um, and then lastly we've got a pre-eq and this is essentially a boost in different areas so we've got b1 um, is the left hand side that offers a high frequency boost that adds detail and openness to the sound um, n is a neutral tone that is rounder with less attack and then b2 offers a boosted mid-range and high frequency so looking at the rear of both amps they're exactly the same we've got an effects loop and we've got our speaker out um, so you can either use a single 8 ohm or dual 16 cabinets and then the input for the provided power supply with the amps as i say i will do a more detailed run through of each amp where we'll check out what the dials are the parameters of each control that kind of thing in their own respective videos so that was the comparison between the Mini BE and the Mini Ecstasy. Um, let me know in the comments which one you prefer and why. Um, if you did enjoy the video, please do click like and subscribe. Um, it really helps out the performance of these videos. Um, as always, if you've got any questions, let me know in the comment section or you can send me a message at James Franklin Guitar. Um, and lastly, thank you very much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.